You just said, you just said um, the worst thing that can happen is if you live forever. But what if that death is then imposed on you? So I, I go back to what happened on uh, Easter Sunday in Sri Lanka and the attacks on various churches um, across Colombo where 310 people were killed. I mean, what goes through your mind when you see this, I mean, some would say level of evil inflicted on man by man? Oh, we must understand, evil has always been inflicted only by one man upon another man, never by some other forces. It never happened like that. No hand jumped out of the sky and did any evil to anybody ever in the history of humanity. It's always one person doing something horrible to another person. This could be done for economic reasons, this could be run… done because of egoistic reasons, this could be done because of wealth, property, so many things. But if we have a fight for something, let's say we are fighting for these flower ways, you and me. At some point if we fight enough, either some wisdom will arise in you or me and say, okay, you keep it but I don't want this nonsense going on forever. It'll come somewhere. But when people believe that they're fighting for their gods, there is no compromise. This is what we need to understand. You cannot compromise when you're fighting for your god. If it's property, I'll give it away. But I'm fighting for something about which there is no question of compromise. So we need to understand this. It's not when events happen like this, terrible events like this happen, everybody for a few days they will feel all this and then they'll go about their normal business. We must understand the moment you believe something, and I believe something else, it's just a question of time when we are going to kill each other. Maybe we will or maybe our children will or maybe their children will, but it's bound to happen. When you believe something, when you believe means just this, what you do not know you assume and you concretize this assumption in your minds and you gather numbers, if these thousand people here all believe one thing, and when we step out on the street, if they all believe something else, inevitably there's going to be a clash. It's just a question of time. How do we deal with this though? So, you have set up the menu, but you're surprised when it gets served on your table. <laughs> Why are you surprised? It is bound to happen. It's bound to happen. All this talk about just adjusting and, you know, creating little bit of peace here and there is not a solution. One fundamental thing that we should do in the next twenty-five years, if we are really concerned about the future of the world, because the day of the sword is over. Now it is a… it is a day of a deadly button which can do things that you can't imagine ever, those kind of things it can do. Well, these deadly buttons are being spoken about on a regular basis these days in various places. So when this kind of capability is there, it's important in the next twenty-five years, we have to establish in the world, your religion is your personal pursuit, do whatever the hell you want. But it cannot be a national or global agenda. This must be set one hundred percent. If we don't do this, we are not looking at just a few churches exploding or somebody shooting in the mosque or something else you could have nations exploding into bits. It's… it's… a large part of humanity can go into bits because that's the kind of empowerment we have in terms of technology. It's not like you'll take your sword and kill hundred people. You're going to just take away millions at a time. So when this kind of empowerment is there, these kind of rudimentary beliefs… when I say rudimentary belief, I'm just saying you believe something that you don't know. Let's understand the word belief first of all. I'll ask you a simple question, is it okay? Am I… am I too abrasive for you? <laughs> you said it's head talk <laughs> Suppose I ask you right now, how many of you believe you have two hands? Please raise one hand <laughs> Do you believe you have two hands or do you know you have two hands? If I start an argument with you that you don't have two hands, 
And if my argument becomes too powerful, one slap in the face <laughs> and you know you got hands. <laughs> so with hands you know, there are so many things you believe. What does it mean? It simply means things that you, you do not know. You are not sincere enough to admit what I do not know as what I do not know. Because you have not understood the immensity of I do not know. Only when you see I do not know, the longing to know, the seeking to know and the possibility of knowing becomes a living reality. Otherwise everything I do not know I just assume. What is the point of that? The moment you assume and you gather thousand people who assume the same things and I assume something and I gather ten thousand people who assume the same thing, this is… clash is inevitable, believe me. But it's easier said than done to say, well, in the next twenty-five years we need to get out of this mindset. Well, never before this was possible. Today we are sitting here just talking to a thousand people. But you know that today we have means, what we speak here, we can make it reach the entire humanity. This was never ever possible. Many fantastic human beings have come, but what they could do was minimal because when they spoke, hardly ten people heard. Today you can sit here and speak to the entire world. When you have this capability, how come you say you cannot transform the world? We can. It is just that, are we committed to making it happen? I was just talking to somebody who is some kind of an expert on the internet. That's when I w started going on YouTube and everything. <laughs> this is about twelve years ago. I was talking to someone in the United States who is some kind of an expert on the internet affairs. So I've never gone browsing or anything, I'm just busy with what I'm doing. So I just asked, what are people looking for? For hours on end they're on this net. So he very casually says, uh, Sadhguru, uh, about seventy percent is pornography. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> he says, yes. I didn't want to believe him. I said, this is not possible. It can't be seventy percent. <laughs> Maybe some people are looking up something. But then I check with a few other people. Everybody says seventy percent of data is pornography and they tell me every year some 1.2 million children below fifteen years of age are being sold on internet. What's wrong with us? I'm… I'm saying when such a tremendous tool of technology comes to us, we want to sell our children? Is this how we use it? We want to change this. That's why I'm loud in the last ten years <laughs> out on the